Hi everyone, it's Comics Villain and welcome to The Backstory. In comics, just like in life, more often than not, you learn about the current life of the main character and later learn about their backstory. I wanted to get out there and show people a little bit about who the current line of indie content creators are, where they came from, and what lies ahead. In this series, I've contacted each creator to get specifics on themselves to share with you today. Alright, let's dive in. On this episode, we talk about Jeremy Lott. Jeremy is a writer from Linden, Washington, but grew up in Tacoma. He's been writing nonfiction prior to his entry into comics. His first campaign within the indie comic scene is called Movie Men Crowded Theater, which is on Indiegogo. As of the making of this video, it has made $2,446 by 90 backers and is currently in demand. Impressively, not a single backer has backed out of this campaign as confirmed by Jeremy. You can catch Jeremy on Twitter. What got Jeremy into comics? He says, The thing that got me into comics was a Disney movie called Condor Man. It primed me to like comics and think of creators as possible superheroes. I bought and sold thousands of comics in the 90s. Gave it up for a while when I moved to DC for seven years, came home, and eventually decided that I wanted back in. You know, some of us can have those moments where we leave a passion but one day come back for one reason or another. I had stopped for a few years myself, and it was because of certain artists and writers that gave me a reason to invest again. Next we find out which artists and writers have influenced Jeremy the most. He says, Stan Lee revolutionized comics twice. First, he insisted that the characters, both heroes and villains, were personalities rather than icons. Then he decided that these characters needed to be on the big screen. Neil Gaiman is the Frank Sinatra of comics. He did things his way, and it turned out his way had a lot going for it. Peter Samedi hates it when you compare him to Stan Lee, so I won't. Though I did recently commission Peter to do a sketch card of Stan Lee for me. But his impact is likely to be felt far beyond his own comic book company, Alterna. He's working to try to restructure the comic book industry so that it will not just survive in the long run, but prosper. There are several others that I could name, but let's keep it simple. If you are in comics and you are doing things a little different and succeeding, I've got my eye on you. In regards to Peter Samedi, he is a legend in the indie community and will go on to do incredible things. If you don't know him, I highly suggest looking into his company called Alterna Comics as well as checking him out on YouTube and Twitter. He's doing some impressive things right now. I asked Jeremy what some of his past projects were as well as how he got started in writing. He states, I've written books prior to this, though they were nonfiction. A History of the Vice Presidency, a memoir for a former governor of Maryland, that sort of thing. Honestly, I think it's fantastic that people start off in a completely different area of writing and transition to comics. You can learn a lot and bring what was unique from one end of things to your comic writing. It's those differences, those life experiences that help people to stand out. You can find out more by looking up Jeremy on Wikipedia, which includes his past publications as well as his time as an editor and pundit. In regards to projects he's working on, after his current, he states, I've got several projects in production, including Beer Man, Tarot, AUMF, or Authorized Use of Mega Human Force, and Murder. I also have a sequel planned to Movie Men that will be a crossover, Movie Men Meet Spork Man. I really like the Spork guys, and we share a publisher, so I asked them, and they gave the A-OK. -okay. They get script approval to make sure their character doesn't engage in unsporksmanlike conduct. Doug Curtis will return for art on that one and hopefully all future movie men issues. I've written a children's book as we called Princess Sparrow and the Three Gifts. Need to work on getting a publisher for that. There are a lot of songs about Superman I'd like to turn into a series for DC called Songs of Superman. My favorite Marvel character is probably Death's Head, which would be fun. There are a lot of free floating properties owned by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby Estates. Somebody needs to get all of them under one roof and call it Jack and Stan Comics. 
Lastly, ask Jeremy if he has any final words on his current project as well as other projects he wants us to know about. He says, There are so many great comics crowdfunding right now. You did Ferryman recently and I think that's great. The first issue was very well done. My first comic is Movie Men. It's set in nearby Bellingham, the biggest city in the county. It's about five kids who work at a theater and have to figure out what to do when a reality bomb goes off and rips the monsters out of the screen and into real life. I do the writing on Movie Men. Doug Curtis does the art, colors, and lettering. Wicked is going to publish it and fulfill the Indiegogo. I'm excited to get Movie Men out there. I tried to pack more fun per square inch into those pages than you'll get an entire trade from one of the big two. It's an all ages book. Adults should be able to enjoy it along with their kids. Somebody described it as Ghostbusters meets Archie with some last action hero thrown in it. It begins with a bang, but does not end with a whimper. That's it for this episode of The Backstory. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Jeremy. Let's support our indie creators. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. Help me reach that 1,000 subscriber milestone. Also, like, share, and comment on who you would cast in a Movie Men movie. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, and have a great rest of your day.